rate system. That's the actual depreciation. We'll just use straight line. Uh, the other difference here is they have changes in networking capital. Uh, so what, we, what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate cash flows. We're including an opportunity cost. Uh, then we have to, the only thing we haven't seen here that, uh, is how we, we use networking capital. So the idea of, of any of these projects is you're going to have a networking capital uh, outflow in the beginning. And then at the end, a little different from here, they have uh, sort of a, a staggered outflow and then a staggered inflow. And what I'm just going to do is have a cash outflow at time uh, zero and then a cash inflow at the, at the last period. In other words, um, we've seen most of this here, but let me just, and we'll go through this example, but why, why might I have a cash outflow? So what we're going to do, the, the, maybe I can talk about the overall structure of these types of problems, is we're going to have, uh, you know, an example. So going through here, we have um, this Baldwin company. Uh, they, uh, they, they're considering investing in a machine to produce bowling balls. Uh, manufactured in a building which can be sold for 150000 And we'll walk through these numbers so you at least know how to, to deal with it. The first thing when you look at this kind of question, you just have to look at each piece of information and know how to deal with it. So the first piece of information is um, we're going to manufacture the bowling balls in a building uh, that can be sold for 150000 Where Where do we include that 150000 Do we include that 150000 Is it an opportunity? Yeah, so absolutely. So in other words, um, we can, if we can sell it right now, so we start to have to uh, start getting a timeline. So you know, T equals zero. Um, we're going to have negative 150. Because we can sell it now for 150. So that's an opportunity cost. So we should include that. Now, the next thing it says we have a, a cost of a, a, um, a bowling ball machine, $100,000, with a salvage value of 30000 in five years. How would we deal with that? How would we deal with that piece of information? Can you say it again? We, we, the machine that we're going we're gonna to produce this with is going to cost $100,000 today. Right? Uh, and it has a salvage value of $30,000 in five years. So at T equals zero, it's $100,000. So out. absolutely, hundred thousand dollar cash outflow. And then five at five, it's thirty thousand inflow. Five. For, what did you say it was? It wasn't it year five? But it'd be yeah, time yeah. period. Yeah, five. We say it'll have a salvage value of of, of thirty thousand. So you can sell it for thirty thousand. Right? Yeah. So what we're thinking is we can sell it for thirty thousand. Don't write this down yet, but just think about this. Um, so this is sort of the idea where we buy it at time zero. Uh, cash outflow of 100,000. We sell it at time five with a cash inflow of, of, of 30,000. What do we need to do? So discount. Well, we're we're going to discount it absolutely. That's why we're laying this out at, at, at each time period because then we're going to calculate the cash flow at each year and then discount them back and calculate the net present value. But do we have to consider anything else when we're buying this? Does it affect anything? Well, let me, so let me say, and I forget what the example uses. It probably uses matters, but I'm not going to use matters. Say, straight line depreciation to zero over five years. That's what I would say on an example. So let me add the fact of straight line depreciation to zero over five years. You know, depreciation, straight line, to zero over five years. So now how do we include this? Well, once I've said depreciation, all of a sudden now that should click that, well, this is going to affect cash flows from time one uh, to time five, right? Because we're going to have depreciation of 20000 right. every year. So one thing, now you have to start thinking of, okay, uh, well, I'm going to have a depreciation expense of, um, uh, of, of 20, what, 20000 every year? So this is year one. What I would usually do in a, in, a, in a question like this is I would just calculate the cash flow for one of these years and then it's going to be the same for years one, two, three, and four, the way I'm going to structure these questions. So I'll, I'll just probably write it out for year one. But we're going to have a, you know, a depreciation expense of 20000 in years one, in years one, two, I'll write dot, 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 right? One, two, three, four, five. Now, that's not a cash outflow, is it? But is it, is it going to affect our operating cash flow? Mm -hmm. 
why is it going to affect our operating cash flow? Because it's in the equation for operating cash flow, absolutely. Uh, because it, um, remember, uh, it, it's going to lower our taxes, right? So in other words, we have to include it because it's going to lower our taxable income. If we were to calculate our taxes um, and so forth without that, you know, so it, it does affect our cash flow. Uh, so we, we want to include it here uh, because it's going to, in, in like say, it's in the operating cash flow equation. So now the only other thing to think about is if we do this. So in year five, we include a negative twenty thousand then do we get this entire, and we do say we do successfully sell it for 30000 Do we get this entire 30000 What does the IRS say? Because this, like we just mentioned, this is a tax shield. This lowers my taxes. So what the IRS says is, you've used a tax shield of the entire am amount. Right? So you used a tax shield of the entire 100000 but it only costs you 70000 so you should only have gotten a tax shield of 70000 Does that make sense? So we have to do what with this 30000 Pay taxes. So after tax salvage value, or, you know, the Greek letter tau is the tax rate. So one thing you have to make sure. Now, here's the thing. Let's say I depreciated it straight line to 30000 over five years. So each one of these five years, I say it's uh, 70000 divided by five. Then do I have to pay taxes on it? No. So in other words, keep in mind, this is, this is here it's straight line to zero. And on exams, to, to not make things difficult, I'll always, well, I shouldn't say always. I'll probably have a straight line to zero. If I wanted, I could say straight line to 10000 And then you would have to say 30, I, I pay taxes on 30000 minus 10000 right? And that's, that's you know, I pay taxes on that. Does that make sense? But I, I probably uh, good. So that's something we have to deal with. Um, then the, the, the text goes on to say production per year, 5,000 units, um, year one, 8,000, 12,000, 10,000, 6,000 in the remaining years. It gives us the price, $20 per bowling ball. Uh, it, and now that's just to get our sales, right? So all we do is each year take number of units times $20. That gives us our sales. Uh, Production costs ten dollars per bowling ball, so that gives us our cost. So by doing that, we sit there and say, okay, I'll just do this for year one. And it says five thousand uh, times uh, twenty dollars per bowling ball. Twenty dollars. So this is you know this is our sales. Our costs are going to be ten dollars per bowling ball. So this would be five thousand times ten dollars. These are our costs. This is our depreciation. Um, also, given the tax rate, this is going to give us operating cash flow. Right. So from this information, um, and we can get operating cash flow, and so we just have an operating cash flow in each one of these years. Does that make sense? The only other thing to deal with is we have uh, networking capital. So I mentioned in the beginning you have a networking capital cash outflow. And the text, what does the text do? Networking capital at the end of each year will be equal to 10% of sales. That's not a that's not a that's a reasonable assumption. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit easier. I'm just going to say, you know, in questions like this on an exam, you have a, a 20,000 cash outflow and network capital at time zero, 20, you know, and then which you'll recover entirely in year five, right? So the idea here is you're going to say uh, you'll have a line for change in networking capital, negative 20,000. Positive 20,000. So that's how you'll include networking capital. And then, of course, all you have to do uh, sum everything, cash flow per year, discount it back, add whatever the discount rate is, um, calculate net present value, and decide. So when you're going over these problems, the only thing you, you know all, you know, you know how to calculate operating cash flow. Um, it's just how you're going to incorporate uh, the cost, you know, uh, and networking capital. Those are the only kind of two new things. And again, we'll do we'll do a couple of these in Excel, so it'll be very clear. Um, uh, the only thing that, that people kind of hit a little bit of a, a hitch on is just being able to read these things and immediately classify these questions. So I've done this so much. When I read this question, I can go back because there, that because there, that because there, that because there, there. Put everything into its category, and you know, very quick. But in other words. Um, so you just need to be able to read through and say, okay, this is this is to give me operating cash flow. This is to give me 
that and just sort of remember the pieces. Uh, but we'll set up a spreadsheet. You'll have a whole spreadsheet that'll that'll remind you that you need the change in networking capital, that you need, you know, the after-tax salvage value and so forth. So you should be ready for, for it on the exam. Uh, now, the only question that I, I haven't asked you this year, why do we have this networking capital? What's the point of this? What would be the idea of having, uh, including networking capital in this project? What's networking capital? What generally affects what goes into networking capital? Why would we have a networking capital outflow in the beginning? What's sort of the theory behind it? Get assets? Sure. It, well, what, it, what sort of, what goes into network capital? We're not talking about um, uh, uh, plant and equipment here, right? Networking capital. That's not what goes into networking capital. What goes into networking capital? What, what components are in there? Current assets and current liabilities. Current assets and current liabilities. So in other words, why might I have sort of a cash outflow with respect to these accounts in the ca at the beginning and a cash inflow at the end? In other words, once you start selling something, what do you, uh, what do you sell it on? We, 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 we sell a bowling ball. Do we immediately get paid for that bowling ball? Yeah, so in other words, it takes us a, a little bit of time to, to uh, so we're expending, you know, these costs, and it takes us a little bit of time to recoup those costs, right? So the idea here, that gives us, you know, the initial, the fact that we're going to start selling without receiving payment, right? And then uh, here, it's sort of equivalent, and at the end of the project, we sell off all of our inventory, right? And we collect without producing more inventory, so we have a cash flow in there. So you can think of this as just what's going on with our receivables, uh, accounts receivable, accounts payable, and so forth. We're paying... Uh, but we're not receiving in the beginning, and then we're receiving and not paying at the end. I'm just looking in here. It says it's 10% per ball uh, production costs, and these costs increase at 10% per year thereafter. Easy stuff to deal with. You just say increase it, you know, increase your costs at 10%. Um, uh, so good. Um, so that should give us sort of an idea, uh, enough of, to understand when we start doing these capital budget problems, what we're doing. Does that make sense? So I'll leave this until, you know, a half hour from now when I bring up Excel and we'll start going through. And we can do this example here and put it all in and get the same numbers that they do. But it's generally, you have all those numbers here in the text, so it's generally more useful to start doing that in chapter problems. And we'll go through there and, and you know, and, and, and calculate that. Uh, go through an example. And again, once you have this example, you can save that template and use it on the exam. Save that Excel template. Good. Any questions on that? I hope that sort of classified what we're going to do. Again, we won't have to use macros, so don't worry about that. Uh, good. We'll use straight line. There's a couple things here where we... Uh, there's uh, at companies. There's tax books and there's shareholder books. So you know, fi different financial statements depending. Uh, some financials go to the to the IRS. Other financials go to shareholders and annual reports and so forth. Uh, with two set of books, we use the tax books. The tax books are uh, one again. Uh, we want actual tax outflow. So those are the the, the ones which are appropriate for for estimating actually how much cash uh, is going out and coming in. So we use tax books, though that's not a uh, terribly important. Uh, networking capital, interest expense. The idea here is notice nowhere here did we uh, include interest expense, and we won't include interest expense. In other words, we don't include how the project is financed. Now the idea of this is we, we, we value the project, let's say, as it's all equity, and then meaning not including interest, so we don't have any interest in here. And then um, the, the, our capital structure, in other words, which takes into account you know, how much we pay for a given level of risk in our company uh, goes into the cost of capital. So in other words, ultimately, overall, if this, is, if this project is as risky as uh, other projects at the firm, we will use the firm's weighted average cost of capital. So in other words, if this is a you know, bowling ball factory and our business is making bowling balls, we're just thinking of exp expanding so that this business has the same level of risk as, as our 
uh, other business, then I could just say, well, we'll use our weighted cost of capital as our discount rate and calculate the net present value. So in other words, our financing is baked into the discount rate, not into the cash flow calculations. Does that make sense? So in other words, we don't include any sort of interest expense in here, but it is in the weighted average cost of capital, because the weighted average cost of capital is going to be cost of equity and the after-tax cost of debt. Right? So in other words, if you're sitting well, at some point we, we have to include how we finance this. Well, that will be in the discount rate. Is that okay? The only other thing to, to think about is um, what if this, and this is, you know, it's same one stuff. Of course, if this project is not uh, of the same level of risk as our, our other parts of the company, then we can't use our weighted average cost of capital. In other words, if, you know, if I'm a bowling ball manufacturer and I'm thinking of, which, you know, opening up a, a search engine, you know, internet search engine, which is much more risky, then I obviously wouldn't use my, my weighted average cost of capital for my bowling ball operations for the search engine. To the extent that this is uh, the same as our, then I would have to sort of consider um, similar assets in the market and, and what their cost of capital is, in which we'll bank in how, how those, um, those assets, those other assets which I'm benchmarking against are financed. Good. So we, won't, we, we don't include interest, and none of these problems will we, include, will we include interest. But it will be rolled up into the discount rate. Uh, good. Uh, inflation and capital budgeting. Uh, the one thing to say about inflation and, and capital budgeting is uh, if you use, the only thing to make sure is if you use nominal rates, that you um, discount at the nominal rate. If you use real rates, real rates of increase, uh, then you will have to discount at the real rate. So, so long as uh, some things are nominal increases, make everything nominal increases and make the discount rate nominal. So you just need to be consistent across using nominal or real rates. That's not a, uh, that's not that won't show up on any exams. What's that? Oh, God. <laughs> it's not a uh, cash flow inflation.